I'm John Bassler. This is the John Bassler Show. Michael Tomaski, chief political correspondent, columnist for the Daily Beast, observing the war between the Republicans, the declaration that it's every man for himself or herself. That's a former senator from New Hampshire speaking. The headline in the Washington Post, Trump declares war on the GOP. The extremely, extremely dark turn between the Speaker of the House, Ryan, and the candidate, Trump. Michael, a very good evening to you. Right now, it is difficult to say that the Republican Party is coherent. So I come to you and your measure of what's going on in the Republican Party. Is this about losing? Is this about ideology? Is this about conservatism? What is the what is the overall theme of this enmity? Good evening to you, Michael. Good evening, John. It's about all those things and more. But, uh, you know, when you get down to it, it's about winning and losing because this is election time. And, and the point of elections is to win them, not lose them. Because uh, if you lose them, you don't get to do your stuff that you want to do. Right. So, <clears throat> so uh, but here's the interesting twist to me. Uh, I have a slightly different take than the one you usually or not slightly, considerably different take than the one we usually see in the media where you, we see these screaming headlines about mass defections from Trump and so on. And, uh, you know, compared to what's normal, yes, it's fair to call the defections mass. But compared to the whole number the whole complement of people, it's still not really that many. I counted it up the other day, and if you bunch together Republican senators, House members, and governors, who are the big, you know, it's the A-team of either political party, uh, about 15% of them have uh, uh, denounced and distanced themselves from Trump, and about 85% are still with him. So uh, the defections aren't really that mass, but, but... 85% isn't enough for Trump. He wants 100. And he's going to be so furious at that 15 that he's going to tear the party to pieces. We can see what Trump is worried about, losing, losing spectacularly. What is the Republican Party worried about? Is it the Senate, Michael? Is it the House? Is it both? Is it uh, trying to govern afterwards in the interim of a, a hypothetical new Clinton administration? What is their biggest fear that they don't want to talk about? Well, I think uh, the biggest fear is um, the Supreme Court, uh-huh. uh, because you know the conservatives. Uh, we've had a conservative majority on the Supreme Court. Uh, different people measure this different ways, but I would say since the mid to late 1980s, you know, since Rehnquist became the Chief Justice and Scalia came on, that that was in '86. Um, <clears throat> at the same time, uh, and so that's a long time. And there have been a lot of decisions that they've made that conservatives have been very happy with. And, there, and if Hillary Clinton gets to replace uh, Scalia and let's say maybe, not that I'm wishing ill on anyone, obviously, but let's just say Anthony Kennedy, who is up there, decides to retire. And then she replaces Ginsburg with a liberal. Uh, I mean, it, it could be not just a 5-4, but, a, but a, a Ginsburg obviously is liberal. That wouldn't flip, but Kennedy would. Uh, so you might have a 6-3 court for, for 30 years. That's what people are most worried about. And that involves the Senate. So that's I think Republicans are most worried about the Senate. I don't think I don't take the House being in danger for the Republicans very seriously yet. But we have 26 days that could change. The conduct of Donald J. Trump these last days raises the question about whether he wants to be a Republican, whether he regards himself as a Republican. Is that is that a fundamental problem for the party? I understand that you're a Democrat looking outside in, but I understand about inside as a Republican. I'm totally confused about whether it matters or not if the if the top of the ticket is a Republican. Does it, Michael, to your measure? Well, of course it does. Of course it does. And um you know, he he has no loyalty to the Republican Party uh, as an institution. He has loyalty to one thing. We know what that is. Right. Uh, and um, so <clears throat> he doesn't care what happens to the party. And uh, you know, he is he is more popular among Republicans right now than Paul Ryan is, than Mitch McConnell is, than any of his chief critics are. Uh, so he's got a lot of leverage over them, a lot of leverage over them. And a lot of them are sticking with him, uh, because they need his voters. They need his voters to vote for them on election day. Uh, people disappointed, uh, in Marco Rubio 
Well, go ahead and be disappointed, but there's a very clear and I must say from Rubio's point of view, coldly logical reason for him not to denounce Trump. If Trump's voters uh, come to the polls and uh, decide not to vote for Rubio because Rubio has distanced himself from Trump, that's his quickest ticket to losing. The campaign so he's got him in a box. The campaign right now in the Senate, I'll, I'll concentrate on the Senate, shows confusion because while we have Portman well up in Ohio, Toomey is under pressure. And I saw within these last hours that Toomey says to one of the major newspapers in Philadelphia that he may not make a decision about Trump right up until Election Day. Yeah. That tells me, and Toomey's a conservative conservative. That is yeah. a first-term oh, yeah. senator in the Keystone State, which is trending heavily blue at this point. That tells me that Toomey is fretful, deeply fretful. And if he's worried, that means Iota is, that means Johnson is. All of the battlegrounds then are at risk for the Senate seats and for the House seats too, Michael. I'll extend it to the House. Not, uh, nothing holds if Toomey's worried. That's right. That's right. And uh, he's basically tied. And, you know, I mean, you see different things, but he and Katie McGinty, his Democratic right. opponent, are, are basically tied. Now, every senator has to make this calculation. Every Republican senator in these purple states has to make this calculation that I referred to with respect to Rubio. Uh, they have to decide whether it's more important to them to get Trump's voters to vote for them or to hope that they can persuade moderates uh, to split their ticket uh, and and make the argument that I'm going to be a check on President Clinton. You mean he can pick up a Clinton vote? Is that what he's looking for there? I think it's possible he can pick up some Clinton votes, yeah, because I think some conservatives who are appalled by Trump are probably going to vote for Clinton or maybe Gary Johnson. But um, so I I think he can. Yeah, I I think he can. uh, People like him. And Ayat, uh, particularly from that state. Oh, she got in a lot of trouble. Ayat is a more difficult uh, yeah, story. Yeah, yeah. Well, she really. <laughs> she spoke out of school, and man, and yeah. yes, when she praised Trump, and that yeah. to, to walk that backwards. Also, she's facing a much stronger candidate in Hassan. She is. Yeah. Than, yeah. than Toomey's facing it, and I'm concentrating on these two states. Michael understands these are not only battleground states, but this is the difference between a Democratic Senate and a Republican Senate. Those two states alone. Would, yep. would turn the story. Uh, right. With Portman holding Ohio, you can only look to these things. Joe Heck in Nevada, he's also having a difficult time. Yeah, he's, he's got a very close race. Missouri is a closer race than most people expected. And now Indiana with Evan Bayh uh, getting back into that race gives right. the Democrats a shot. I think he's probably a little behind the Republican, but only a little. Finally, Michael, the House. You don't embrace yet the idea that the House is at risk, but I do because mm-hmm. morale is plunging. And with 26 days to go, that's everything and get out the vote. That, la- that last three days yeah. of getting people to the polls. And I, I don't at this point, I can't tell, Michael. I can't either. Um, I have a feeling that among moderate voters, who will vote for Clinton, uh, I, I, you know, there'll be, as I suggested, you know, a fair amount of ticket splitting because there'll be a lot of people voting for Clinton who don't want her to have a Democratic Congress, you know, who don't want the Democrats to have the full run of Washington. Okay. So they'll vote for her and they'll vote for a check on her. Uh, I think, you know, particularly if the Republicans candidates themselves push that line uh, and, and drill that idea into people's heads. Uh, over the next month, uh, then I think there might be a lot of votes like that. On the other hand, you make a good point. Just simple, simple dispiritedness of Republicans, particularly if there's one more thing like that video. Right. You know, and a lot of us suspect there's at least right. one more right. thing. Right, at like least that one video. more thing. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Michael Tomaski for The Daily Beast. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.